Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be showing you an exceptionally cool Unity tool that is actually completely free, and everybody should be adding this to their toolbox. It is something called Mesh Sync. It was made by Unity of Japan, and what you see in front of you, this is Mesh Sync in action. On the left-hand side here, we have Blender. On the right-hand side here, we have an HDRP project inside of Unity, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab this guy, and I'm going to move it slightly like that and you'll notice over here it immediately updated now i'm going to go back over here into blender and i'm going to go ahead and let's go into say sculpt mode here and we're just going to make a couple of quick edits and ruin our mesh here now you'll notice as i am editing the mesh in the one tool it is immediately updating in the other tool and that ladies and gentlemen is what mesh sync is all about you can actually have your content from blender be immediately updated over uh, in the world of the Unity game engine. It is a very cool tool, it is a very free tool, and it is one that you should definitely check out. So I'm gonna show you how to go ahead and install and work with this guy. It is very, very simple. Uh, as I mentioned, it comes from Unity, uh, the Jap Japanese uh, GitHub division or area. They do have documentation in both English and Japanese. Uh, and it is basically working together with the Mesh Sync DCC plugins. Uh, it synchronizes mesh to model editing in the DCC tool into Unity in real time, allows developers to immediately at least how, see how things will work in game while modeling and what you'll see over here available for windows mac and linux although i did try this on mac and i got some python errors about x86 versions in my side um so if you're running python you might run into some problems on your mac based off you're on an m1 silicon and you're trying to run the x86 version or whatever so i ultimately just decided to try it with windows instead so it says it's supported on mac my experience showed it differently in terms of the dcc tools it supports it includes maya 3d studios max motion builder blender moto and meadow sequoia Sequa. Uh, and you'll notice here, in terms of features and functionality for a change, Blender is the most supported, which is pretty cool. And you see here, basically, it supports mesh syncing, camera syncing, light syncing, double-sided meshes. None of them support negative scale. Uh, Multi-UVs. I don't know if that means UDIM or not. Uh, scene cache exporting and bi-directional sync. So again, you can make a change in Unity and it will sync back to Blender. But that only works for Blender, but that is very, very cool. Uh, so here are all the tools that are supported. Another thing to be aware of, I had Blender 3.4 installed and it did not pick it up as part of the installation. So uh, it is using the current LTS version at this point in time. I expect it will be updated at some point. So now let's go ahead and actually show you how to use this. First thing you're going to want to do is come into the repository itself. This guy right here, which will be linked in the linked article down below. As always, go to the releases section over here and grab the tarball. This guy right here, this TGZ file, just grab that one. Now what you're going to do is fire up um, your version of Unity. You can use URP or HDRP. This example is HDRP. Go into the asset store, the package manager, sorry. And what you're going to want to do is click this little plus guy over here and say add from tarball. And then what you're going to do is locate the guy you just downloaded and open that one up. So that will open up and add it into your thing. Uh, there you go. Mesh sync is now enabled. Let it do its little importing of assets stuff uh, like so. Uh, should just take another couple seconds. This, this does take, I think, about 20 seconds total. Uh, so we'll let the, the C sharp scripts continue to compile. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, whenever you say that, they always take just a little bit longer than you were expecting. But okay, should be done. Uh, should be done. <laughs> okay. And I think we're there. Okay, so it is now installed. What you'll notice is if you go over here to edit, and then you go to uh, preferences, what you'll find is there is now a mesh sync category here. Uh, if it did not automatically detect your installed operating, uh, installed DCC tool, so if you have Max Meyer or whatever installed and didn't find them, then uh, you can basically do an auto tech or you can actually tell it where it is by clicking the little plus here and browsing to it. So once you've actually installed the plugin, so basically just click the install plugin side of things, that will install it into Blender. So here we are in Blender. I will go ahead and we got to sacrifice it one least one default cube for this video to work, right? So here we are inside of uh, Blender like so. Uh, oops. Uh, now what I'm going to do is edit preferences here. Go to your add-ons right there and we will search for sync like so, and make sure that this little guy is enabled. Once that is done, 
we can now set up the server in the Unity side of things. So you can see over here, I'm gonna go ahead up here, go to create mesh sync, create server. Now this is gonna turn into like a game object that's gonna host our Blender hosted scene. Now you see it's up and running. Now one of the problems I did with the initial demo is I actually had two copies of Unity running. Do not do that, that is a bad idea. So you'll wanna have only one copy of Unity running at a time, but theoretically you can run them on different computers to get the ports right and the IP addresses right. So now I'm gonna head back. So this is now hooked up and ready to go. This guy will be listening to Blender. We head back over to Blender now, and I'm just gonna go ahead, we'll scale up the default cube instead of killing it. There we go. So there is our default cube. Now to access this guy, what you wanna do is bring up the tools thing. You can bring that up by clicking this little guy over here or the N key and then go to the tools tab. You're gonna notice there is a mesh sync server. So you can actually, if you have it as a different machine, you should be able to set the IP up there, change the ports, whatever. We're gonna go with stock defaults because I'm running it on both of them on my same local machine. So the default settings should work for you. Uh, and yeah, that is ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and do a manual sync like this. We switch back over here and boom, we are now showing it side by side. So let's go ahead. Uh, we'll snap that guy to the left. Uh, we will snap Blender here to the right. All right, so there we go. We have uh, our default cube going on over here and it automatically syncs up over here. Now, if you wanna, speaking of automatic, you can actually turn on auto syncing if you wish, and that can be turned back off by clicking right there. So now when I make any edits, so here, let's switch this guy into object mode. Uh, we'll grab an edge here like so, and let's do, I don't know, let's do a bevel on that. Drag that out like there. As you see, it immediately updates over here. Uh, it's really cool functionality. Now you're gonna notice there's a bunch of options down here on the side of the server. Um, in most cases, it should pull the texture across if it's using straight up normal texture maps like what we saw with that first example. That was a file I downloaded off of uh, Sketchfab that came pre-textured. But if your materials don't automatically come over. So for example, if this guy right here, if I just use a stock built-in material. So let's make sure I'm back in. It's hard to tell which one I'm on sometimes. They look kind of similar. If I go back to this, this guy right here, we switch into object mode like so, and I go to the material and I just make it blue. You see it, it's synced over, but if I want to actually bake that material out, uh, we have that option as well. So you scroll on down to here, you can see you've got the options of baking out both the animation uh, and the uh, textures out to individual materials right here. So basically just click bake, it will go through, bake it out into a format. So if whatever you're working on isn't carrying over correctly material wise, just make sure you bake out the materials and off you go. Now, another thing you're gonna notice is over here on, this, on the um, Unity side of things, this guy is actually bringing in everything. So our light, our cube and so on, all of the scene is actually being created here. Now I have found though, uh, that for some reason, the default lighting is different. So when I bring the, the lighting in uh, that was created over in this light here, for example, uh, it's really weak. So I'm finding myself having to actually um, tweak the lighting a bit to get it to work exactly the same. So here you can see how much lighting that light is having on the scene over here. And let's get rid of this directional light completely. Okay, that's unideal, but it does give you an idea of what you're dealing with here. These lights are really weak and I don't know why that is the case. Uh, but way they're importing, you're gonna probably have to recreate the lighting to a certain degree. But as you see, it brings across everything that you are working on. So if you are working, if you are sculpting or something over here, you can immediately see the end result as it exists in your game. But just do notice for some reason, the light settings seem to be a little bit different. Now do keep in mind, this is a pretty early version. This is 0 0.1.0. 0.17.1 at this point in time. Uh, so, you know, in time, hopefully that kind of stuff gets resolved, but that's the only real major gotcha I've seen is for some reason, the lighting doesn't carry over one-to-one. -one, uh, and mostly it's a matter of the intensity of the lights that are brought in. If you know why this is happening, do let me know, but hopefully it's just a flaw in the program and it will be fixed in time. Uh, and again, you have the option of controlling what is actually imported. So if you don't want uh, bones to go over, blend shapes, cameras, lights, etc., you can actually turn them all off. Uh, and everything you create will be brought over. And again, in, in the Blender's case, if we make edits to the mesh over here, um, in Unity, it will actually sync back to Blender. That is not the same case in Max or Maya uh, as we saw from the documentation earlier on. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Mesh Sync for Unity, a free and in my opinion, must have tool for your toolbox. Um, it just gives you the ability that instead of exporting things out, you can literally see exactly how they would look with this live link uh, directly in your address. Again, grab this guy, move it, immediate change over there. And it gives you an idea of how your stuff is going to actually look exactly as it's gonna look in the engine. Uh, and yeah, 
pretty cool stuff. You can even use this with uh, geometry nodes uh, and actually keep that link alive between. But I have seen a little bit of issues when working with geometry nodes. Uh, so let me know what you think of Mesh Sync, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.